All right, let's take a look at the wing. First thing we're gonna do is duplicate it. And I'm gonna mirror it over. And it'll be easier for me to work vertically. So I'm gonna go ahead and update the spotlight by tapping the Z key. And then you can see at the top here, this icon is called rotate. And if I hold shift, it'll snap to the, I think the closest like five degrees or something. Make sure that's vertical. And we're just gonna kind of scoot it over, zoom in to something that's reasonable and tap the Z key to drop it to the canvas. And as far as what's going on here, I'll go ahead and throw another polish on there. I don't actually want it shrinking that much. I just kind of want to smooth out what's going on. And I'm going to make it a little bit wider and a little longer. It's going to be relatively easy to modify this for the resulting geometry if I want, but uh, the closer I can get at the beginning, the better. So, And it doesn't really matter what's happening on the very edge because we're going to ignore that. Let me just see how this is kind of working. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this thing some subdivisions. We're going to be doing some masking and that's effectively just doing a vert color. So um, I'm gonna give this five subdivisions and that five is not carved in stone. What I really need is when I hold the control key, let me go ahead and set this back to how it was or how you're likely to see it anyway. So if I mask it, you can see how the the border here is a little bit soft, but there's there's a decent amount of resolution. And if I wanted to move the focal shift up, I would get a much tighter line, which is what I'm after. So in this case, I'm just gonna increase my focal shift. I'm holding the control key down so that I'm, I am dealing directly with the masking brush, as opposed to one of the other brushes here that you may or may not have selected. So you've also gotta make sure that you've got your mask pen enabled for this. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on lazy mouse and I'm gonna give it a fairly high number. And I'm going to go ahead now and we'll just do some outlining. And I think my brush size 20 is probably fine. So we'll just kind of run around. I'm keeping a, a little bit of an eye on what the shape of the wing is in the reference. So we'll get something that looks kind of like this. And then we can begin whatever. Like I'm not gonna, it's not gonna be a, a perfect reproduction, but we can be informed by the reference here. I'm gonna make my brush size a little smaller. We can drop it down to something in the 15 range, zoom in a little bit. And we'll just start making some kind of swoopy Art Nouveau stuff in here. Keep it somewhat regular. And then we'll do some vertical ones. Little branching veins. Let me hit Control Z a couple times. Looks like I blurred my mask a bit. Okay, and um, yeah, like maybe one more. Okay. So, and, and redoing this process is as easy as coming back to this wing and then just drawing a new pattern. So it's certainly not a big deal. I'm gonna go down to my geometry tab here. I'm gonna have to delete my lower subdivisions. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then we'll go to edge loop and I'm going to do an edge loop mass border right here. And you can see something looks a little bit different now. What's happened is if I unmask it is we now have everywhere that was masked has been essentially carved into the geometry a little bit crudely, but it's effective. So I'm going to go ahead and you know what, actually, before I do this, I noticed it got kind of cool looking when I blurred it. So I'm going to blur it and then I'm going to sharpen it up. 
Oh, that might be too much. It, it may not catch this. Like, that may be too faint. We'll know in a second. Edge loop mass border. Yeah, it doesn't work. Too bad. So back to where we were. Edge loop mass border. Just a little experiment there. Go to the select rect so I can easily isolate this geometry. And I'm going to do a delete hidden. And we'll go ahead and come over to polish. And we'll polish it up so it's this actually gets basically that same look that I was hoping for with the mask. I'm sorry, with the, uh, the the blurring of the mask. So we've got that. It still has double turned on. So let me go and disable that so we know what side we're working on. So a little bit wobbly, but I think I think it can be worked with. So now I'm going to go ahead and do a Z remesher on it just to kind of make it a little bit lighter weight. So let's see for Z remesher. I was playing with some of these settings. Let's see. So I want to make this. So the default value that you're going to have here is five. What that means is it's going to use 5,000 polygons to regenerate the surface. So we can see what that result is. It may do a little bit of trimming here. You can see we kind of missed that one there. So let's just increase it. In fact, if we increase our adaptive size a little bit, what that's going to mean is it'll be able to generate smaller quads to accommodate the sinewy surface here. So let's see if that helps. It doesn't really make a difference. Let's increase this to six. Try that again. Great. Okay, and now you can see we've got this lovely regular geometry, which I'm now going to extrude. So we'll go to Z Modeler. I want to make sure my cursor is over a face. I'm going to hold the space bar. We'll go to Q Mesh. Make sure the target is set to Polygroup All. And then I'm going to Q-mesh it in, and you can see, unsurprisingly, that it is uh, inverted in terms of the normal. So we'll just go to a flip right there. And now what I want to do is I want to add two edge loops inside of all of the extruded edges here. So I'm going to pause the video so you don't have to watch the whole thing, but this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to go through each one and essentially do something like this. All right, so they have all been updated. So at this point, what I want is for the outside to be on one polygroup and then for the inside to be on one polygroup. So the easiest way to do that is I'm going to go ahead and hide or invert my visibility here. So I'm only looking at my extruded edges or extruded faces here. I'm going to uh, tap Control W. Whoops. Control W to put everything in one polygroup, and then I'm going to come over to visibility, which is right here in the, in the tool menu, and then just go to shrink. And you can see what that does. And now I can put the inside ring there into its own polygroup. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn on crease polygroups. So you can see we get a crease between the, the flat part and the first generation here of those uh, internal rings and then the second one. So I'm going to mouse over a polygon and go to inflate. Make sure my target is set to polygroup all. And we'll just kind of move this out a little bit. I'm going to take a look around, make sure I don't get any intersections. Like if you've got a very small uh, hole, this might be one of the things that would like it could potentially begin to fill it in. But I want this to read fairly nicely, so I'm going to throw that uh, a little bit of a larger value on the bevel. And then tap the D key to enable dynamic sub subdivision, which you can see here. Once that's enabled, I can drop my crease level down to some other, some value in the two to three range. And then uh, it looks like three might be too sharp. This message mesh is already pretty dense to begin with. We can take a look at two. Oops, that's three. There we go. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. I think that will be sufficient as a level to block in for the time being. We may continue to work on it uh, over the course of the project. There may be one more little thing we can do. You see, there's still a little bit of, of uh, some wiggle going on in there, and I think it might be possible to... So what you could do is you could do a polish by groups, and that might do a little bit of our work for us. You could do polish by features. 
see if that makes much of a difference. Polish is just, uh, the regular polish here will just melt it, which in this case wouldn't necessarily be terrible. You can see a little bit of a pinch there, but I don't think it's going to be too bad. And this looks nice and clean and swoopy to me now, so I think that's probably fine. And you can see we've inherited that nice subtle curvature as this thing is going to uh, move over the body. You can make a little adjustment to the position. See there's a little lag in the update. It's probably fairly dense. How many subdivisions? I'll drop this to three, so it's a little bit more efficient. And then we can just do a mirror and weld here in the modify uh, topology section. And for the old wing, I will keep it around in an old file, but not this one. So if I need to, I can come back and grab it.